Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not a doctor, but I have a PhD in recognizing bullshit when I hear it. We did get one really satisfying ruling from the court today, and it was a decisive loss from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. The court rejected the Georgia Republicans' case, trying to overturn the hefty fine she incurred for repeatedly refusing to wear a mask on the House floor during the pandemic. That's right. Marjorie Taylor Greene took her COVID conspiracies all the way to the highest court in the land. Damn! No, so you're telling me Marjorie Taylor Greene, who already had her pay docked in 2021 for flouting a mask mandate on the floor of the House of Representatives during the COVID pandemic, got no help from the Supreme Court on Tuesday? This person? It's time to be honest about the vaccine injured, and we need to stop allowing these COVID-19 vaccines to be given Gentle out ladies, to children. Young lady's time has expired. I now recognize Mr. Garcia from California for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I'm sorry you all had to go through that. That was a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and wild accusations, uh, which we now have been uh, debunked by, by medical science. And we should be clear that vaccines work and save lives, and they have millions of lives in this country. Marjorie Taylor Greene and her fellow Republican representatives, Tom Massey and Ralph Norman, lost their lawsuit against former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi at every level. They lost at the district court, they lost at the appellate court, and they lost at the Supreme Court, where the court declined to take the case, rejecting the appeal outright. Marjorie Taylor Greene had asked the court to declare that the fine she incurred as a result of not wearing a mask on the House floor during the pandemic was unconstitutional, that Nancy Pelosi was using the mandate as a weapon. We did get one really satisfying ruling from the court today, and it was a decisive loss from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. The court rejected the Georgia Republicans case, trying to overturn the hefty fine she incurred for repeatedly refusing to wear a mask on the House floor during the pandemic. That's right. Marjorie Taylor Greene took her COVID conspiracies all the way to the highest court in the land. Of course she did. You may remember Congresswoman Greene and some of her MAGA colleagues flouted the rules over and over and over again, even while sheltering in place during the January 6th insurrection, by the way as thousands of people died of COVID every day across the country. Marjorie Taylor Greene boasted about her total disregard for others' health and safety. I refuse to wear a mask and Chris, oh. I have to tell you something else. I'm not vaccinated and I will be standing strong, standing up for the people across this country that refuse to get vaccinated. Eventually it caught up with her financially. As The Hill notes, House rules fine lawmakers $500 for their first infraction with the mask mandate and $2,500 for subsequent breaches. The second one really hurts to be withdrawn from their yearly pay. Green racked up more than $100,000 in fines. That's a lot of times refusing to wear a mask. That is also well over half of her annual salary. So the congresswoman and two of her colleagues, Thomas Massey of Kentucky and Ralph Norman of South Carolina, brought a lawsuit. Of course they did against then Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other House staffers. They argued basically that the fines amounted to an illegal reduction of their salary. They lost in front of the district court, again at the U.S. Court of Appeals, and now the Supreme Court has refused the case altogether, allowing the lower court ruling to stand. So, as it turns out, the rules apply to you too, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mask up or pay up. Marjorie Taylor Greene essentially had a problem with the fact that the House is allowed under the Constitution to implement its own rules for how it wants to run the chamber and discipline its members. Her complaint about essentially her workplace rules reminds me a lot of the many Karens that existed during the pandemic. Remember the ones that complained they had a constitutional right to shop at Target, to go to a restaurant, to go to a movie, some Karens even called the police when business owners refused to serve them without a mask and said to the 911 operators that they had a constitutional right to be in that store. I'll work with Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. I'll work with uh, Peggy Hall. Um, and uh, those are names that you might not be familiar with, but I am. And I know that everyone who calls in order to have their rights be supported, um, to be able to shop by being able to breathe an O2, not CO2, um, they're all winning their cases. Oh, those were the days. I said it then, I'll say it again. For every Karen, for Marjorie Taylor Greene, 
Entering a private store, voting on the House floor is a privilege, not a right. The House had a clear interest in keeping its members safe. One House member and one incoming House member both died from COVID. So the House and Nancy Pelosi was well within its rights to conduct its affairs accordingly without interference from the courts. Every court, including the Supreme Court, found this filing from Marjorie Taylor Greene as meritless as every Karen who complained about not getting to do what they wanted when they wanted. Now she and her fellow MAGA representatives will have to pay up nearly $100,000 in mask fines. Ooh, that's gonna hurt! It's not surprising Marjorie Taylor Greene refused to wear a mask during the pandemic, even though an unprecedented number of people were dying, because she also peddled dangerous conspiracy theories regarding the COVID vaccine. Uh, this is the same person that we know that has, on countless posts, has spread misinformation, encourage parents to refuse routine vaccinations for their children, which you just heard, by the way, and even con compared our pandemic efforts responses to the Holocaust. I want to just actually read something which is in the public record. I'm not um, uh, saying anything that's not in the public record. Uh, that a member of this committee actually said, the same person that is actually attacking vaccines, said that vaccinated employees get a, vaccine logo, a vaccination logo, just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. I want to I read that uh, again. Vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo, just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Uh, th that is the level of uh, insanity and attacks that we are having here as we actually debate the, the lives saved around vaccinations. Now, this same member has also held sh shadow public hearings promoting ideas that COVID is a bioweapon to target people of specific races and that vaccines, and I quote, cause turbo cancers. I want, I want to read you this, this quote, and, I, and it's in the, again in the public record at a, at a hearing. Um, have the COVID vaccines resulted in an increase in cancers and are turbo cancers real? Now, Mr. Chairman, this is, um, in my opinion, just uh, insanity. Uh, we know that's not the case. Dr. Marks, can you clarify once again for the American people, do the COVID vaccines cause turbo cancers? I'm a hematologist, oncology, that, oncologist that's board certified. I don't know what a turbo cancer is. It was a term that was used first in a paper uh, in mouse experiments describing an inflammatory response. There are, there, we have not detected any increase in cancers uh, with the COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you. Looking back, we all probably know someone who died from COVID. I know I do. And it's thinking of them that makes her efforts from discouraging people from getting a life-saving medical treatment in the form of a vaccine that much worse. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.